Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamir Nadav. I'm the director of product management over at uh, Gazeos Games here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Um, and I've put together a bit of a uh, presentation to talk about my experiences, my trials uh, throughout the games industry, and what I've learned uh, along the way, and how we can pass on that knowledge, hopefully, to you. So in the beginning, many, many, many long years ago, uh, this is me. Um, this is me in, in 1980 as a, as a bright young man, no idea what happened. Um, and sometime a little bit later, my father brought this brand new shiny computer in 1982 into our home. And immediately, I became very, very interested in seeing what a machine like this could do. In fact, I was so interested that the very first thing that I did was figure out how to delete my father's financial information. So he eventually decided to buy me a Nintendo um, and my love for computing simply continued. And ever since then, I knew that gaming was something that needed to be part of my life. When I got my first Nintendo, I knew that creating games was what I wanted to do, but I never knew how to actually get there. So time went on. I did lots and lots of unique things. One of them was uh, join uh, the Navy as a reservist in the Navy in the U.S. And I remember one day driving back from the Naval base to my home, I saw a billboard that was hanging over the freeway that looked something like this. And it said, learn how to create video games for a living. So obviously I was completely drawn to this and realized that for me, you know, full sail was the place where I needed to get to. Um, and what's important about this is this isn't, you know, as early as possible. This wasn't, you know, as soon as I left high school, this was later on in life. In fact, many of my classmates were older than me. And what's really, really important to remember is that it doesn't matter how old you are, it's never too late to get into games. The gaming industry is continuously growing. It's growing fast. It's the second, the second biggest, fastest growing industry in the world right now, the first one being medicine. And right now, you know, thank God for that because of uh, our pandemic, but gaming is the second biggest industry in the world. So let's talk a little bit about Full Sail. Um, full Sail, you know, if you look at it now, it's this beautiful, amazing, gorgeous campus. It looks like a combination of, you know, Star Trek and some, you know, future utopian planet, and it's amazing. But it didn't start this way. Um, the beginning, uh, Gary Jones, the founder of Full Sail, started it literally in the back of a truck. And he was teaching people recording art. So you would open the back of this very large, you know, tr tractor, trailer, truck. Um, and inside the back of the truck, where normally there'd be supplies, there were desks with recording uh, equipment. And he would teach people and have other teachers teach people how to mix and make music uh, for a living. When I went there, it had evolved from the truck into... Uh, merging with a shopping mall. So, um, you know, the, the shopping center would have a grocery store and then some classrooms. Um, and then it would have a clothing store and a place to buy pizza and a sandwich restaurant and then some more classes. And it was just this big mix of, you know, there's a school here if you really know what you're looking for. Um, but now, you know, obviously Full Sail has continued to grow and become successful. And what's really, really important about it, you know, and one of the reasons why it's so successful is the quality of the people that both attend Full Sail and teach at Full Sail. So for me, you know, these are all people who, who made video games. And my classmates were all people who are now making video games. And so what's really, really important is aside from the lessons that you have, you know, the, the work that you're doing, the programming skills that you're learning, or the art that you're drawing, is that the teachers know people in the industry. They're connected to the industry. And all of your classmates are going to be the junior programmers with you, and then they're going to be the middle level, and then the seniors, and then the architects, 
And so, you know, my peers are working on some of these amazing games that you may have seen in the various demo reels at Full Sail. My colleagues are working on games that are winning awards at the game, you know, uh, every year. And these are all people that when I met them, we're sitting next to me in a classroom with our laptops, learning how to do the tools of the trade. So, so this is not where I work, um, but it's a picture of Ubisoft. And the thing that I really want to highlight is that Ubisoft is a super creative, fun environment. And many, many game studios, you know, not just Ubisoft, are you know these super creative fun environments and no matter if you're a game designer if you're a programmer if you're an artist if you're a producer um you need to have that creative spirit uh within you because you need to think of how to solve problems creatively you need to think about you know what are people going to like how are people going to respond to it and the creative spirit is just a big part of of that attitude but the other thing um, and this is something that, you know, I had to convince my parents of for, for quite uh, a few years is that making games is hard work. Um, you know, games, games are not easy to create. Games like uh, the games that are winning awards like Tomb Raider and God of War, you know, games like this take hundreds of people, years uh, of hard work for them, for them to create. And it's not, you know, just a matter of of you know coming to work putting in their eight hours you know they're putting in significant amounts of time in order to make sure that the game feels just right looks just right acts just right doesn't have you know is, is as bug free as possible it's serious hard work which is why there's such a huge career in making games so you know again games are fun it is fun to create great games, but it is hard work. One of the things that I say often is that when working in video games, um, there are many, many days that are great. And there are some days that are terrible, that are difficult, that are horrible. But it is never, ever boring. Crunch is something that uh, comes up a lot. And while the games industry is continuing to try and find ways to fight against it, the reality is that crunch exists. Uh, what crunch is, if you're not familiar, it's when you go from working 40 hour work, 40 hour work weeks, you know, eight hours a day for five days a week, to suddenly you're working 60 hours a week, to 80 hours a week, to 120 hours a week, and you're working Saturdays, and you're working Sundays, you're working every single day of the week, for as many hours as possible in order to finish the product on time. This is getting better. It's something that has been getting better slowly over time, over many, many years. And we as an industry are maturing to try and find ways to fight against it. But the reality is this happens. And that's not the worst thing about uh, that can happen in the industry. So layoffs happen. You know, I have had a very diverse uh, career. I've worked on MMOs, I have worked on console games, I have worked on mobile games, um, I've, I've worked on PC games, I've worked on a wide range of games in my experience, even games on the NVIDIA Shield. The reason for this is because the studios that I worked at would have layoffs or they would shut down um, because making games can be very risky. You know, you can imagine how much it costs to try and build a game that takes hundreds of people years of times and it does not meet up to expectations so you know it can be very difficult and so if this is an industry that you love if, if making games is, is your passion and something you want to do this is going to be the most adult advice i'm going to give but i recommend that when you first start working in the industry do what you can to build up a strong savings of two to three months if possible so that if you know, this happens, hopefully not when, hopefully if this happens, if you need to find a new job, you have enough money in between trying to find a new job that you're able to cover yourself and allow yourself to continue searching so that when you do get your next job, you're able to pick up where you left off and continue on, you know, living, uh, living a comfortable life.
So that's the bad news out of the way. We're going to move on and talk about happier things. Game jams. Game jams are some of my favorite things uh, in the industry. Game jams are when you know, we people get together in small teams, three, four, five. Um, sometimes they make t-shirts, which is always awesome. And they are given a prompt or a challenge. And they're told that for this game jam, you will need to make a video game about growth or about the environment or about some social issue. And then these teams are given 24 to 48 hours to make a video game from scratch. And they have to be very clever. They have to come up with something super creative and work really hard to demonstrate this idea that we've given them. And they do amazing things. This has been part of a program, you know, um, this started many, many years ago and they've exploded all over the world. Um, and they are so inspiring for me to see. And what it shows me is that the best ideas come from the smallest groups. The places where many big companies are going right now is looking at these game gyms, looking at these little indie projects, because in order for an indie project or for a game jam project to compete in the gaming landscape, it needs to be unique, which means that all of these great new ideas and new innovations are coming from these small groups of people who just get together, come up with an idea, and then in 24 to 48 hours, they make it happen in a way where they can show somebody what their idea is. Now, to go from small to, uh, to big, um, if you don't know what these letters are, um, this is a GDC, or the Game Development Conference. This year is the first year it has not had one, um, but there's going to be one in the summer, um, which will be nice. And for me, places like this is where I go to re-energize. Um, you know, we've talked about crunch. We've talked about the stress of layoffs. Um, you know, things we haven't talked about yet is how difficult it can be as a game developer to see people reviewing your game or talking about your game online. You know, it's where people seem to be their worst, right? You know, they're, they're giving reviews and feedbacks and I hate this, I hate that. GDC is the opposite. GDC is a collection of game developers from all around the world who get together to talk about what they love. They're here because they love making video games. They're showing off their latest games. They're talking about the latest techniques they're using or ways that they're solving problems that they've encountered, or they're talking about new problems that we're encountering as technology continues to expand. And it is an incredible place to meet people in the industry, to meet people who want to get into the industry, and to just mingle with gamers. And my advice here is, you know, I advise anyone who has the ability to go to these conferences. And while it can be intimidating, I want you to remember one important thing is that every single person at this conference is there because they love video games. So if there's ever somebody that you want to talk to, talk about video games. You know, walk up and ask them, hey, what are some of your favorite video games? What do you play? What do you work on? Are you an artist? Are you a programmer? Talk to them about games and you'll make friends. The important reminder of this is always be positive. You know, if, if there's a game you hate, don't talk about it. If you know somebody else likes a game uh, that you hate, don't tell them what you don't like about it. I have a great example of this. One of my friends, his name is John Romero. And you might have heard of him. Um, he worked on a game called Doom. He created id Software. And he's basically an industry legend. Um, I'm lucky enough to have him as, as, as a friend. He's a super cool guy. But I had a friend walk up to him and start talking about how bad of a game Daikatana is. Um, now, Daikatana is a game that John Romero worked on, and um, people like to talk bad about it, but it's a project that he really loved. And so if you insult John Romero to his face, you will end up leaving his party very quickly and uh, likely you know, not show your face around for quite some time. Remember to be positive. Games are meant to be positive experiences for people. They're meant to cause you to think, to enjoy, to laugh, to have a wonderful experience, to teach you. Keep those lessons with you. And when you're interacting with people, 
stay positive, talk about things you love, talk about the games you love, the techniques you love, um, and you will make friends anywhere in the games industry because people love to talk about games. Now, this whole purpose, the whole reason for this presentation is I'm here because I need your help. Why am I here? Uh, what am I talking about? Why do I need your help? Um, the lesson is simple. It's because, you know, I'm, I'm at the point now in my career where I'm not really making games anymore. I'm helping people make better games. I'm a manager. And what I need is I need new people to enter the industry. I need new people to come in with their bright ideas, with, you know, these indie studios, and I need them to come and be the next wave of game development to show um, what the next generation of game development um, can be. I need you to be innovative. And, you know, as I mentioned about how all of these great ideas come from small, small teams, the reason is because it's never been easier as it is right now to develop video games. There are tools out there to develop all different types of games with just a few clicks. There are some pieces of software where depending on the type of game you wanna make or your idea, you don't have to program anything at all. Um, and so I highly suggest you know, anybody who wants to you know, look at a few YouTube tutorials, download all of these free tools, can just come up, uh, can come together and build something and showcase something fantastic. You have the ability to demonstrate what's going to be the next thing that's coming into the industry. So find these tools, prototype something together, build something, hack something, just get it working to the point where you can show it to somebody and say, hey, here's an idea I had, you know, what do you think of it? And there are companies that go to events like, like the Game Jams or who are looking for projects like this who will then, you know, if they like your idea, they will invest in you, they will invest in your company, they will help you finish your game and turn those games, those ideas, those prototypes into million dollar projects. So go out there, find these tools and prototype something, build something, hack something together, have some fun, put something out there and let's see it. So something that's very important to talk about in the games industry is diversity. Look at this picture. What's very interesting about this picture is that there are no men in it. Um, I remember when um, it wasn't even my first GDC, it was a few years in, we had a big announcement uh, for the conference associates, us uh, uh, volunteers at the convention, where we said that for the first time in the game development uh, in the GDC history, there was a line at the women's bathroom. What this means is for the first time at a conference with 10,000 people, there was finally six women who needed to go to the bathroom at the same time. Now we've come a long way since then. Um, we've, we've evolved, we've grown, we're a lot more diverse than we've ever been. And it's continuing to get better every year but it's continuing to be very, very important. Um, and the reason it's important um, is, I'll, I'll give an example um, of The Sims. So better diversity means better games. The, the example I wanna give is The Sims. When The Sims was released, it was created by a team of uh, white males, and it was intended, just like most other video games, to be uh, played by white males. Um, what happened was they had shipped a feature in the game that in addition to just being a life simulator, uh, it allowed you to build a house and, or, and you know, create an environment and prototype and, and just basically see how characters would interact with each other based on, on these parameters. And uh, what happened was in addition to the sales that they were expecting from men, they saw an additional 60% of sales by women and had no idea what was happening until they realized that women were playing in this sandboxy, you know, world building mode. Um, and so since then they realized, you know, how much money they were missing out on by not catering to a more diverse crowd. 
So better diversity means better games. The more diverse our engineering teams, our art teams, our entire company structure, the more we think about how these types of games are going to impact people of uh, all different cultures, all different races and religions. Um, and it allows us to make games that are more accessible to everyone, which for the business minded people generally just means it, we're going to make more money. So to close, um, speaking of diverse companies, this is mine. This is Gazeos Games here in Rio de Janeiro. Um, we are a diverse company full of people from all around the world, people from all different cultures, and they are some of the greatest people I've had the pleasure to work with. And hopefully uh, you can be one of ours. So thank you again for your, your time. Um, here's my information, here's Carol's information. Um, a lot of times I know it can be uh, awkward to reach out to somebody who's presenting, you know, you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do. Uh, if you don't have a specific question, that's fine. As I've mentioned, I love to talk about video games. So I have my Instagram and I have my email. I invite all of you, if you're watching this presentation, I'm assigning you homework. Um, to contact me, send me an email, just say you saw my presentation, you liked it, or, you know, you could also say you thought it was awful, that's okay. Um, just send, you know, just talk to me about games, talk to me about something, ask me questions about what you want to do, um, you know, with your, with your career, if there's anything I can do to help, I'm really, really happy to help. Um, basically, you know, I, I want to be here uh, to help you. I'm, I'm not just, um, a face and a, pre and a presentation. I'm someone in the industry who is actively looking for people to come and join me in the games industry so we can be the next wave, we can make the next games, we can continue to make the industry be what it's always been for me. You know, the games industry has been my home. And I want to help that make that possible for as many other people as possible. So please talk to me about your favorite games. Talk to me about what you like to do. Talk to me about anything. And I, I am here to, to participate, to help, to talk, to chat, whatever it is. Um, I promise you, you will not annoy me. I have never, ever had anyone annoy me. So you're welcome to try. And I challenge you to try um, to, to annoy me. But again, you have my contact information. I really, really look forward to hearing from all of you. And uh, thank you for taking the time to, to listen to me.